pocket knife, I happen to know that uh, the opening of the end of that ring terminal is not quite big enough to fit both terminals for C5 and C7, so I'm just going to open it up just a little bit more by running my pocket knife down into that slit. And I know that's going to be big enough to fit my components. The next part I want to assemble is the bus bar that connects the drain terminals to the uh, outside terminal, which is your cell minus output of the pulse width modulator. Okay, so here, here is the terminal that becomes the cell minus output. I'm going to take and preform this. Just a bit. Again, very tight tolerances, you'll see why. There's a nice close-up of how I have bent this lead with the ring terminal underneath the head of the screw. There's looking at it from another angle. Okay. Now because this is insulated from the case, the screw passes through the case the hole is actually bigger than the screw. And what we want to do is we want to keep the screw centered in that hole so that it doesn't short circuit to the outside of the case and insulated from the case. To do that, we use a insulated fiber shoulder washer. First thing I put on here is a flat washer. And incidentally, I'm gonna point out right now these flat washers, these metallic flat washers, are actually, even though this is a number 10 screw, these metallic flat washers are number 8 flat washers. Because I have found that number 10 flat washers are very sloppy on the threads. And number 8, even though they are for a number 8 screw, they're sloppy on number 8, but they fit just right over a number 10 screw. So when I'm at the hardware store and I'm picking out my hardware, I'll make sure that the, the selection that they have will fit. I'll take a number 8 washer and I'll slip it over the number 10 screws that I intend to buy. And 9 times out of 10, in fact I'm going to say even more than that, you're going to find this is a perfect fit. So go for number 8 washers. Next I'm going to put my insulated fiber shoulder washer. And I'll zoom in for this that I can show you, you can see, if I can get it in the camera, there. You can see on either side of the thread, there's a raised lip. And when that raised lip sits inside the hole that's been drilled in the case, it keeps the, the screw centered in the hole and prevents it from short circuiting to the edge of the hole edge of the opening. So I pass it through the case. I'm going to look at it along the end to make sure that it's centered and I'm going to hold it with the tip of my finger. can see it's perfectly centered in that hole and it will not shift because of the shoulder of that fiber washer inside the hole. <clears throat> now all I need is a flat fiber washer. Don't need two shoulder washers. Number eight metal washer. A number ten split lock washer. And a hex nut. Okay, so I've made this finger tight. Now I don't have to worry about the screw drifting. 
and I'm going to take the bus bar and I'm going to spin it around inside the case so that it swings down and meets in close proximity to the drain terminals of the power MOSFETs. Now you're going to see where the tolerances come in. All right. Here is the source terminal right here. It comes straight up and the clearance from this source terminal to the drain terminal lug is about an eighth of an inch inside here. It is also only about an eighth of an inch from the source terminal to the head of the screw. All right, so here's the source terminal. There's the head of the screw and there's only about an eighth of an inch. When I solder the source wire, the source wire will be soldered down along this surface away from any of the uh, areas that might possibly cause a short circuit. What I need to do now is tighten it in place. And remember what I said. When you take a box wrench and you tighten down the nut, it is possible that the nut inside underneath the head of the screw can remain stationary and the head of the screw spin causing this compression fitting to loosen up. And if you do that, start over, believe me. What I do to hold it in place is I'm just going to snug it by hand until I feel it start to get very tight. And then I'm going to take my Phillips head screwdriver and I'm going to put it against the head. All right, so with my Phillips head screwdriver against the head, I should be able to prevent the screw from spinning while I finish tightening the nut to hold it to the case. And it actually did spin a little bit, so I'm just going to take my screwdriver on the head and crank it like so and bring it back down into position. And one more time, let's finish this up. Now I am getting this very tight. Not tight enough of course to strip the strip the threads, but you have to keep in mind these are the terminals you're going to be attaching your four gauge wire to. And on the outside, you're going to want those connections nice and tight also. And if you take a wing nut and you crank it down and this mounting hardware is too loose, guess what's going to happen? Everything else inside is going to try and spin and you can create a short circuit that way. So all of these steps are very important. Zooming back in again, you can see how that wire that, that is now the bus bar that joins the two drains together lines up with the drain terminals. What I'm going to do now is take and with my needle nose pliers wrap the free end of the drain terminal over the bus bar on both sides and then I'm going to solder it.